patients react to certain food components with the manifestation of abdominal symptoms, whether there is a specific trigger linked to a mechanism and to a specific symptom. That has been a little bit more difficult to understand in terms of evidence-based medicine. It's what we call food intolerances. is when a patient doesn't have the capacity, for example, to metabolize a certain given food component, like lactose, or large carbohydrates that are called FODMAPs. And other patients have true sensitivities, and this implies an immune reaction to a food component, and the typical example is celiac disease. It is very important to have a medical diagnosis before starting any restrictive diet. If you have celiac disease, this is a medical indication for a gluten-free diet. If you are not celiac, and we have ways of ruling out celiac disease with a blood test or with a biopsy or a combination of the two, then it is not that clear that a gluten-free diet is going to be the healthiest option for you. Any restriction diet is going to have a downside because you are withdrawing important components of the diet that are important for your gut health and for your gut microbiota. When you do a gluten-free diet, you are withdrawing fiber, fermentable foods that are important for your gut health. So if you don't complement this diet properly, you may have impacts in your bowel movements. For example, you could get constipated or you could change the nature of your gut microbiome balance. And this starts to appear in some recent papers where groups of bacteria, for example, associated with gut health, such as bifidobacteria, are re reduced by a gluten-free diet and also by a low FODMAP diet, which is another very fashionable diet nowadays. Your microbiota is specific to yourself. When we talk about modulation of our microbiome, we have to think about the future. And it is likely that this dietary or probiotic modulation of the gut microbiota is going to improve gut health or to prevent disease, is going to become a tailored uh, activity or event. And that we will need personalized dietary interventions or probiotics that are particular for that person. Right now, we should follow our grandmother's advice to eat a diet that is balanced and that contains many different food components so that this improves the diversity and, and the balance of our gut microbiota. Right now, we cannot give specific probiotics or dietary interventions. We are just beginning to learn how to do these.